Stitching Niche. I'm back for an update video. Today is June 22nd. It's a Saturday morning, almost noon, and I've done a lot today. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But I'm, I've am i got lots to share today. I've got some FFOs, some FOs, some plans, some whips, some other crafts besides cross stitching, and I'm going to do a shop update as well. And I've got some other things I want to share. So um, a life update, uh, farming, gardening, it's been crazy. I, my chickens are great. I have 16 more baby chickens. They're so easy to order online and then you get them and they're like, oh, that's a lot to take care of. But they're cute, cute, cute. I got five true blue, uh, whiting's true blue, five whiting's true green, and then five buff Orpingtons. So I'm excited about those. The true blues and true greens, that's the color eggs they lay. Buff Orpingtons just lay brown eggs, I believe. And then um, the place that I order them from, if you order a certain number, you get a free chick. So I got a little one. She is fuzzy and fat. She's like twice the size of the other chicks. Um, she's real pretty too. So I have no idea what she is. She's a surprise. So we'll see. But they are two weeks old. And in about two more weeks, I'll move them out to the big house with the all the other ones. So um, the other babies are doing great. They're not babies now. We call them teenagers. Um, but they're doing fine. So we've got our 20-something chickens plus the 16. So my husband's building me a new hen house. Thank you, Hobby. That's very sweet of you. Gardening is moving right along. We harvested potatoes yesterday which was hot work. So yesterday was the first day of summer and we plowed up the rows of potatoes and go, and picked up all of that. Had that finished before nine, 10 o'clock in the morning, which was nice. Um, I probably should not have um, dug the sweet potatoes, but it is what it is. My brother-in-law came in a little bit later and said he'll just replant it. So he took all the little small potatoes and just replanted the sweet potatoes. So we'll have two rows of sweet potatoes um, ready sometime in October. So that's nice. Um, our watermelons, something loves them because I went out there and we have what looks like nice little watermelon boats where they've been eaten um, nice and cleaned out. But uh, otherwise, you know, we've got acorn squash and cantaloupe are coming in and everything's looking good. I picked apples off our apple tree, which is crazy. I didn't know we would have apples, but we do. So, um, still having fun with all of that. Um, my sister's coming over tomorrow and we're gonna put up potatoes. So we're gonna can potatoes. All right, that's what Bridget wants to do. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, so that's kind of the farm update. Bees are doing great. They're busy, busy. My husband's gotta work all the bees today. I think that's what his plan is. I'm not sure when we're going to start harvesting honey, but we've got a lot of bees. When you go outside our house, we have wildflowers planted um, all around and they just, it's just buzzes. I mean, it's just buzzing, buzzing, buzzing out there. I got up early this morning and planted daylilies. So I went to a daylily show and bought day lilies and it's been a while I should have planted them before I did but they they'll be fine I planted like 26 no 25 day lilies in a new flower bed so can't wait to see what that looks like and then I went by this morning when I dropped off my orders and, and bought three more hydrangea bushes so I love hydrangeas so those are some of my hydrangeas out of one of my hydrangea bushes that are dry aren't they pretty um, so that's kind of a life update. I'm not working this summer except for orientation. I just got back from a, a business trip to Dubuque, Iowa last week. That was fun. Um, I was there from June 11th through June 14th and um, had a good time. I mean, it was, it was a good meeting. I came in a, a day early and um, our meetings didn't start until Wednesday at 5 o'clock. So I rented a car and drove up to Spring Green on the 12th, Holly and Anita. When you said you were there on the 12th, I'm like, I didn't see anybody. I guess I got there before 
everybody arrived. So I got there really soon after they opened that morning. But I went up to Spring Green and was able to go to the Country Sampler, which was a really, really nice shop. And I'll show you some of the things that I picked up there later. Um, let's see, anything other of life update? I'm going to a retreat. I'm going to see my sister Katrina. We leave on Thursday to go to Franklin, Tennessee for a weekend retreat. I'm excited about that. Um, all of you that will be at StitchCon, we'll, we're going to have the kind of annex um, retreat down in Franklin, Tennessee. So maybe we can hear all the fun you guys are having. What is it, about five hours away? But um, I'm excited about that. So it's uh, who all's going that I know of. Bridget, Lisha, and Sharon. So our, our normal group, the core of us, um, are going to see Katrina at her retreat in Franklin, Tennessee. So I'm excited about that. Um, and then I don't think I really have any other plans for the month of July, really. I've seen a couple of things that are going on. I'm like, mm, maybe I'll do that. But I might just stay home for an entire month. That'll be something new. So, But, um, you know, we'll see what happens. I, um, I do want to answer a couple of questions that I've had on previous videos. Most of the questions that I get have to do with what's behind me. So... First of all, people have asked about this wall here and what are all of these things. So these two are primitive needle charts. So they're out of print, but this is the Halloween alphabet. And this is, the, I think, Halloween alphabet or Halloween sampler. And this is the Halloween game board. Aren't they cute? This is one of my favorite ones I've ever stitched. I love that orange. I think it was Fallen Leaves. So pretty. This is a Mill Hill. It's the Halloween sampler. It was a booklet that I purchased when I lived in Houston, Texas. When I was in Texas, I was in graduate school. And so in graduate school, you work all the time. I was in the lab all of the time. Um, so we were joking about that the other day at work. Um, and I said, yeah, I took off a couple of weeks to have a baby. And I'm not lying. I took off two weeks when I had my first baby. And I was back in the lab because you just worked in the lab all the time. If I did have a day off, I would probably spend it driving over to Katy, Texas to the Hobby Lobby because I loved Hobby Lobby and Garden Ridge in Katy, Texas. And I pur purchased that booklet at that Hobby Lobby. So that was like 93, 94, 95. I was there from 93 through 96. Um, I don't think I stitched that until like 2005 because it's a mill hill, so it has buttons and all kinds of little tiny charms, and I couldn't afford those things. So I think it was probably 2005 before I had purchased enough of the charms that I felt like I could complete the project. But I love it. It's really cute. It's got two witches over a cauldron. But just search for Mill Hill Halloween Sampler, um, and I'll see if I if it's available through Witchelt. If it is, I'll get a couple of copies and put them in my um, Etsy shop. Jen stitching it. This is Scatter Pumpkins from Shepherd's Bush. And this is that Halloween fairy that uh, you can now purchase through Hershner's as a digital download. And right over my shoulder, that's Midnight Watch by Blackbird Design. This is Stacy Nash, Grace Bridges sampler. I love that sampler. The other question I got is about that little guy back there. So that's Rooster Cogburn. He's a cuddle buddy that my friend Lisha, the Southern Lady, the Southern Ladybug, crocheted for me. She has an Etsy shop. You should check it out. And if you're really interested in that cuddle buddy, go to her Etsy shop and convo her to see if she can crochet you one. He is cute. I love him. All right, so let's get to all the fun that I've been having. So I have traveled, but when I'm not traveling, I get to stay home because I'm not teaching this summer. I am working, I'm the program coordinator for our cell and molecular biology group now, so that means that I have to work the summer orientations, um, which aren't anything like teaching a class. So just so everybody, I, they're frustrating to some degree, but not really. It's kind of fun working with these freshmen that, you know, brand new students coming in have no idea how to register for college classes. So you really have to just treat them like they are 
which they are, completely ignorant of how everything works. So I enjoy sitting down and working with them one-on-one -on -one and getting them registered for classes. So that's what I'm doing this summer, and I've done three of those, and I don't think I have to do another one until July 9th. So I've got a lot of free time to work in my craft room. And so I've been doing some work. Um, I'm going to start with my FFO. So my first FFO is the 12 Berries of Christmas. During Stitch Mania, I started the 12 Berries in that series. I actually finished five of them, and I have FFO'd them as well. So let me get my little basket organized here. They're not going to be in order, but there are my berries. Aren't they cute? This is I, I found this basket at Hobby Lobby on their clearance, and so this is going to be my berry basket. So I guess I'll show you in the right order. There's partridge in a pear tree with all the felt pins and finishing. Here's two turtle doves, so pretty. Three French hens, this is my favorite. I love the colors. Ooh, get it where you can see it. Four calling birds. Oh, there's that. And five golden rings. And they're really easy to finish. You just follow the instructions. They're stuffed with sawdust and polyfill. And then I use the wool felt to finish them. And then I'll have all 12 of, 12 of them in that little basket. That's my goal. So that was one of my first finishes. I worked on that, my FFOs. Um, I also did some patriotic stitching. So uh, if you watch... Sunshine Stitchers. Gary talked about doing one up some of the Blackbird designs, um, more patriotic stuff, and he was going to stitch the hats off to Uncle Sam. I'm like, oh, I'll stitch that too. And before I blink, apparently he finished it. Shelia says that's just the way he is. So you don't do stitch alongs with Gary. I'm, I'm calling them stitch, uh, sags that stitch after Gary because he's going to have it done once he says he's going to stitch it. So I did a sag stitched after Gary. I did hats off to Uncle Sam. And I FFO'd it. And I love this. So this is the, so they give you all the instructions. They give you the complete list of everything you need to finish it. And almost everything you need you can purchase at Hobby Lobby and then in Blackbird Designs booklets, they give you the item numbers for these as well. So this is a paper mache box that's just turned upside down. This is just a disc, one of those little wooden discs. And even this trim comes from Hobby Lobby, and they give you this, the code. And our Hobby Lobby had it last weekend, so they still have it in stock. And when you take off the top of the hat, you've got your pin cushion. So... This is my pin cushion. Isn't that cute? And it's stuffed with sawdust. My brother was impressed with this one. He's like, so what have you, um, he's like, how did you stuff that with sawdust? I said, well, you make a little cup, you sew all the, the sides and the bottom, and then you just pour that stuff in there and pack it, pack it, pack it until you can get, uh, you know, get as much as you can and then sew the top on and pour more in there and then finally close it up. It was filthy when I finished. They had sawdust everywhere. But that's my hats off to Uncle Sam finished. I love this. So everything here you can purchase at Hobby Lobby. You, you have to use Brie Wax, which you, I got off of Amazon, to age it. Do you see my? That's Elvis. This is new. But that's my finish. What are you doing, Elvis? I'm sitting in Elvis's chair, just so you know, and that is his attitude for me to, well, he's waiting for me to move so he can have his seat, okay? The other thing that I worked on was the Holiday Hoopla from Brenda Gervais. So this was my June start in my year of Brenda Gervais. 
So I finished it as described, but I painted this using the same blue that was used in the Hats Off to Uncle Sam. And I found these little berries at Hobby Lobby. And the way I'm displaying this, I have this little galvanized tin with some of my dried hydrangeas that are red, white, and blue color. And it just props up against that on the counter. So cute. Just like that. So I'll show you. That's kind of the, the look downstairs on my dining room. I have a little chest in my dining room that I put that on. So that's another FFO. Oops. All right, and then the next thing I want to show is not a cross-stitching finish, but it is a finish I've talked about before. Oops, sorry, this is shaking. This is the um, sewing uh, accessory kits that are in the Primitive, ne uh, Primitive Quilts and um, Project series. That's a four-part series. So the, this month, or this um, part of the series was the sewing box. So I finished that with wool applique. It's completely covered. And in that, you also get the instructions for making the little scissor pocket. And I went ahead and bought the whole kit. So it comes with, and the scissors. So you buy the kit that comes with all of the finishing materials, but I bought the little sheet scissors to go with it because I want mine to look just like what it looks like in the magazine. And then last, a couple of videos ago, I showed you my finish of the little housewife. The instructions were in the spring edition of this year's magazine and it all fits together in your little sewing box so I finished that it was fun to do I'm really enjoying this I love wool applique though isn't that cute I changed it it's supposed to say my stitching and then I changed it to Jen's stitching all right so that's my I think that's all of my FFOs oh no I have another one for you this is crazy all right, so I subscribe to the Primitive Quilts and Projects magazine. And with that subscription, you also get emails. And they email you all these really cool ideas and kits that you can buy through their vendors. And there was one called Spirit and Sparkle or something like that. They have these little dolls. And I'm, they had a little rabbit one. And I love the Primitive Rabbits, the little stuffed rabbits. I'll show an example of one that I bought during Easter, this kind of stuff. So I love these little types of rabbits. I've been collecting them for years. I have several of them. And they had a, a kit where you can make your own little doll named Ellie Mae. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's cute. And it wasn't too expensive. I'm like, I'll do that. So I bought the kit and I put it up here in my craft room. Wasn't really thinking about it. And then um, because I'm getting all of these projects done, and I'm cleaning out the craft room and getting everything organized. I found that kit and I said, I'm going to finish this this week. Just get it done and, you know, display her on the shelf with some of my other rabbits. I have another rabbit over there. I opened it and did not realize that it is not the same kind of rabbit. It is a huge rabbit, but I made her anyway. So I'm going to have to step over here to get her because she's a big girl and show you my cute little Ellie Mae. Okay, we all ready? Here she is. So this is Ellie Mae, and she's on a stand. I'll show you. On a dowel rod, so I had to stuff her body. It ends there, and then she, there's a little dowel rod. But I made all of her. Isn't that cute? Made her dress, made her little apron, made her little chocolate bunny. It was fun. And I bought it as a kit, and I'll put the name of the company. I think it's Spirit and Sparkles or Sparkles and something. Um, but I'll put it in the, the name of the company down below. But they have all kinds of things like this. But it was fun. I showed it to my mom. My mom was really impressed. And she's like, that looks like something your grandmother would like. My grandmother, um, my dad's mother, made, was a doll maker. She made um, the China dolls which I've shown in a previous video, the one she made for me when I was a little baby. But um, she would have liked this too. But it was fun. It was different. 
something I haven't done before. So I might do more of these. All right, my next kind of adventure has been making project bags. So I've made the vinyl front project bags in the past, and I've shown some of those on my um, uh, past videos. And I've talked about making them and selling them on my Etsy shop, but I'm really uncomfortable with the corners. I don't think they're perfect enough to sell. But, um, you know, so I haven't posted any of them. I decided I wanted to try the zipper front bags because I like those. Uh, I'm actually, I get the So Much to Love bag each month and I love those project bags. And I'm like, well, I want to see if I can make some myself. So I watched Jen's Crafts and Primitive Stitcher, Suzette. Um, they both have tutorials and I watched their tutorials and started making those type, types of project bags. And I love them. And I'm going to sell mine on Etsy. I'm not going to make a whole bunch of them, but as I make them, I'm going to put them on my Etsy shop. So my first one that I ever made was this. It is, I found this fabric at the Cotton Blossom in Jackson, Mississippi, or Brandon, Mississippi. can't remember, but it's in the Jackson area, and I just think it was so pretty. I thought that was so cute. And then the inside, inside is a coordinating fabric from that same line. It's tape measures. So I'm going to put this one on my Etsy shop. I only have one. So if you're interested, Jen Stitchy Ditch on Etsy. But I made myself one as well using a different top to it. This was just some fabric in my stash. Same insides. But if I can find some more of this fabric, I'll, I'll, I'll make some more and post those as well. But right now, this is all I've got. But I had so much fun. These are so cute. And um, I've got a second one that I'm working on. I'll show you it. It's not completed yet. But this is what the top's going to look like. Here's its zipper. Here's the back, and then the lining is this, it's all from, it's like Farm Girl or something like that, but that's another one, and if I decide I want to keep it, I'll keep it, if not, I'll put it on my Etsy shop. So that's another thing I've been working on, and I've had so much fun with those. Um, Having all this time off and being able to just play around in my craft room has been a blessing. I have enjoyed it so very much. Okay, the next topic of discussion is 24 Hours of Cross Stitch, brought to you by Quirks and Stitches, Jen Lee and her mom, Cindy. Great idea, ladies. This has been so much fun. I enjoyed it thoroughly, participating in the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch. Um, I thought about how I was going to approach this. I was going to switch projects each um, hour and eh, I don't know. And I knew I was going to sleep because I'm too old to stay up for 24 hours straight. I know some of you are going, lady, I'm older than you and I did it. Well, I'm a wimp and I couldn't do it. So I was going to do the 24 hours over the 48 hour period. Thank you for that. And, um, then I was reading on the 24 Hours Facebook group and someone said, I'm going to touch all of my whips. I'm going to do one, one length of floss in each whip. And that way I, I work on all of them. I'm like, brilliant. I'm going to copy you. So that's what I did. Now I have 68 whips at this time. And so I had to touch 68 different projects. But in 24 hours, just doing one length of floss, that was that was doable. And I timed myself, so I would start my timer um, when I started working on the project and stop it when I wasn't stitching on it. So I totaled stitching time during that 48 hour period from like five o'clock on Friday to five o'clock on Sunday. I stitched about 18 hours. So I didn't do 24 hours of, of cross stitch during that time. So but I only counted when I was actually stitching. Um, it was fun and I love, you know, keeping up with data. 
Um, but I did, I touched all but one of my whips. I thought I did them all and I posted that I had touched all of them, but there was one that I did not get to and that was Scary Apothecary. It was my very last Mania start this year and somehow it did not get on the list. So I did not stitch on that during the um, 24 hours of cross stitch. So I failed. No, I was just one whip, one whip short. Um, what I did like about that though, is it gave me a chance to go through all of my whips and assess them. It also allowed me to clean them up because you know, some projects I would finish and I wouldn't like finish the, thre the um, strain that I was working on. So it's just hanging out there. So now all of my projects that I'm not currently working on are all nice and, and organized and cleaned up. There's no hanging threads. And um, gave me a chance to see where I stand on a lot of these. Some of these I haven't touched in a year. So it gave me a chance to see how close I am or what are some things that I need to focus on. So I completely changed my stitching plans because of Jen Lee and 24 Hours of Cross Stitch. Before I was using the Tiny Decisions app to um, pick a three day focus project. And I said, I'm not doing that. I'm going to find some of these projects that I have just maybe a day or two left and I'll have it completed. And I'm gonna work on those. So that's what I did over the past week and a half. And I, I actually have a finish. Now, Jan uh, not January, June 11th, I left for a business trip. I flew to Dubuque, Iowa, and I took two projects with me. I, I took um, Halloween Eve by Blackbird Designs and the Garden Club series by Blackbird Designs as well. And that's what I've been working on with a couple of other things kind of mixed in along the way this week. So I'm gonna show you um, an FO and my current whips. Okay, so I have one finished project and that is Halloween Eve by Blackbird Design. I've been working on this for probably a year because it's in that big list of um, whips and I'd work on it for a day or two or three days and I wouldn't finish it. And when I worked on it during the 24 hours of cross stitch, I'm like, I only have a tiny bit. I had like Halloween Eve and this little lacy thing because I'm not stitching all of it. I only did that top part. So I took it with me to Dubuque and worked on it in the airport and on the airplane because that that trip, when you fly out of Mississippi, there's no direct flight sometimes. So I'm going to Dubuque, Iowa. I had to fly from Jackson, Mississippi to Dallas, from Dallas to Chicago, and from Chicago to Dubuque. So it took all day, all day. But that's okay because it gave me all that stitching time. So here is my finished project. I use the call for threads and this is 40 count. I think this is either putty, I think it's putty or Confederate gray from Weeks Dye Works. There you go. And I just think it's beautiful. I'm gonna frame it. So I love this little basket of, fly, of flowers and then I love this little border here. So thanks to 24 hours of cross stitch, I identified this as the thing that was closest to being finished in my whip pile and I finished it. The rest of the trip I worked on the Garden Club series and the Garden Club series from um, Blackbird Designs came out in 2016, I believe. I'll check that in just a second. And I have been working on it for about two years. I'm stitching all 12 pieces together in on one piece and I'm personalizing each of the blocks for a person a, a, a woman that's important or a lady that's important to my life so last time I showed this I had eight finished and I was working on the ninth one well now I'm almost finished with the ninth one and went ahead and started the tenth so here's my progress so you can see the fifth one with the big butterfly. I still have to personalize that. That's that blank space. That's going to be for Lisha. And I think I'm going to fill in some of that space with um, some more flowers. And then the gardener, which is this one here. That's going to be for Katrina. And then this one on the bottom 
that's going to be personalized for Teresa. And I have two more. So the next two is for my co-author Cinnamon, and then the last one's going to be for my nieces Maddie and Lily. But that's my progress, and I'm hoping to get this fill finished by the end of the month. If I can focus on this for the next few days, I should have it done by the end of the month. In addition to those two projects, I've also been working on some other small projects based on stitch-alongs or something that I had scheduled during my, you know, beginning of the year when I had all my big plans of what I was going to cross-stitch. So I've got a couple of other things, three actually other things, no, two other things that I'm going to show you. Um, on June 14th, the uh, Lady Liberty Sal started with fans of the uh, Blackbird design, so that's this drum. This was released in 2017, and I wanted to participate in this because it's one of the projects I had pulled to do for um, patriotic stitching. So I started that, and I'm stitching it on 36 um, Liberty Gathering Gray from R&R &R Fabrics, and that's my start. I love the colors on this fabric. It's really pretty. And for the most part, I'm using the called for threads unless I don't have them. And if I don't have them, then I replace them with a Victorian motto. And the way I do that is I have a conversion chart that I got online somewhere for Weeks Dye Works and Gentle Arts threads. And I pull the DMC and then I go into my other threads, whether it's Victorian motto, or in this case, a limited edition from Gentle Arts, and I match it to the thread the best that I can. In most cases, I can find an exact match. But that way, I'm not going and pulling new threads out of my shop. I'm using some of the ones that I already have. Plus, I love Victorian Motto threads. They're just beautiful. So, so that's the colors that I'm using, not necessarily in those ratios. There's going to be a lot more blue than what's there. So I started that and I've made some progress. This one's a fun, a fun one to stitch. And then yesterday, as I stated earlier, was the first day of, of summer. And so at the beginning of the year, I decided that on the first day of each of those seasons, whether it's the equinox or the solstice, I was going to work on the basket full of blank from Brenda Gervais. So since this was the first day of summer, I worked on the basket full of summertime. And this was a mania start last year. And I've made very slow progress on this project. I'll show you the cover. But I'm getting close to a finish. So I worked on it yesterday for a couple of hours maybe not a couple of hours, maybe only an hour, but that's my progress. So yesterday I stitched on just the red because, oh, the red and a little bit of this Oscar color, because this is, um, I wanted to work on it for this project, but I also needed to stitch on something red for School of Magical Stitches. I needed 200 stitches of red for the Gryffindor house, part of the potion we're making. So I stitched the red on the flag and all, that's why I have these berries done. And then I stitched a little bit more. I put in the stalk here and started the Algerian eyelet or the, um, that Smyrna crosses. So I just need to finish that. There's a house here and the stalk for this one. There's a bird sitting up here and then this floral border at the bottom. So you can see I'm getting close to a finish. And when I finish that garden series, this is going to be my next one that I'm going to make sure I finish. So those are the two that I've worked on other than the garden series and Halloween Eve. Now, um, future plans. In July, I am going to participate in Priscilla and Chelsea's um, Jolly July. And I'm going to start a new ornament each day. I just made that decision today, just like right this minute while I was recording. I made a list of the different ornaments I want to stitch out of the Just Cross Stitch Ornament series. 
about two years ago because that was another thing Katrina and I were going to do. And um, we did, we haven't done that yet, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to have 31 new starts in July. Actually, I'm going to have 32 starts because I have to start my new Brenda Gervais. So the July Brenda Gervais project is going to be One Starry Christmas Eve. I love this. It is. It came out in 2015, and I've been wanting to stitch it since then. And I'm going to stitch it on the call for fabric, which is 46 count Aztec red. Well, it calls for 36 count Aztec red, but Weeks just came out with 46 count. And that's what I'm going to stitch it on to make it tiny. I have this in 40 count and 46 count, I think, in my Etsy shop. I don't know if I may have it in 32 count, but if you're interested, you can check that out. I have a few copies of this in my shop, and I'm going to try to get more. But this is going to be my, my Brenda Gervais to start on July 1st. So exciting. Okay, let's see. What else do I want to talk about? I've shown you my whips. I've shown you my cross stitching. I've shown you my future plans. Oh! I told you about that I went to um, Country Stitches and Spring Green, so I want to show you what I bought. So I didn't buy cross stitch stuff there because I've got plenty of cross stitch and I have a cross stitch shop. I did check out their clearance to see if there was anything in their clearance that I just had to have. And I think I found one Blackbird Design chart there. But I found this quilt, and it's this one here called Whirly Gig. And it's just gorgeous. So I bought the kit. And when you buy, they, they're great at the way they organize things. So the kits look like this, which makes you want to buy it even more. So it's got everything you need for piecing the quilt. And then you just have to buy the backing and the, uh, this is the backing and the binding. So there's another project all ready for me to go from Country Stitches. Oh, excuse me, Country Sampler in Spring Green. Okay, what else do I need to talk about? I have two more things I want to talk about. One is my water bottle, okay? So, when I was driving back from the airport, when I was returning from the trip to Dubuque, I listened to Rachel Hollis's newest kind of book, Girl, Stop Apologizing. I listened to her girl um, wash your face a few years ago, and so I decided I'd listen to this one, and I really enjoyed it. And one of the things she talks about in her newest book, Girl Stop Apologizing, is um, her five to thrive. It's five things or five habits that she does that makes her um, more successful and more motivated, really. So I'm like, I'm going to do that for 30 days. And one of the things is to drink more water. And Lisha, Southern Ladybug, tells me that all the time. And I've been drinking a lot more sodas this past month and a half than I normally do because I'm just like I don't care I'm gonna drink as many sodas as I want and I've been drinking a lot of Diet Dr. Pepper with cherry and I don't feel so great and so I'm like I'm gonna do this with drinking water so I'm drinking water I'm drinking the amount of water I'm supposed to drink according to Rachel Hollis and I do feel better well to get me motivated to drink more water, I'm using my this water bottle I got as part of my swag at the conference in Portland. And I love this water bottle. I don't know what it is about it, but it just makes water taste better. I drink much, much more water because of that. The only thing is that it sweats. And I use my little mug rug that um, Becca sent me. I use I have it up here in my craft room, and I use it every single day. But I can't take it with me everywhere. So I'm like, well, I need like a koozie for my water bottle. So I went on YouTube and I searched for water bottle koozie. And sure enough, I found one. And I made a koozie for my water bottle. So here is my little koozie. It's got wells on it. This is my Carolina Scientific. If you order anything for science labs you've seen that they have really good water bottle and so now I have this little cute koozie to take with me and I drink my water 
And now I'm obsessed because I'm going to make several of these. I told my husband, I said, I'm going to make like seven of them. That way I have a different one every day. I actually went online trying to find more of these water bottles and I couldn't find any. And I really don't need seven water bottles. I just need one. But that's what I made. So that's my last project that I want to share with you is my little koozie for my water bottle. Here, Elvis. Oh, excuse me. See, he's sleeping on my ironing board right on the project because that's the most comfortable spot. Okay, when I was editing my video, I realized that I didn't talk about one thing that I meant to, and that was a question that I had from a, one of the viewers. Um, someone had asked about the chicken that sits behind me during my video. So I want to talk about Rooster Cogburn. This is a cuddle buddy that my friend Lisha, the southern ladybug, made for me as a gift. So they're called cuddle buddies because they're cuddly and soft. It's made out of the best yarn ever. And she crochets these. And she, there's lots of different ones that she makes. She has an Etsy shop. It's um, The Southern Ladybug. And you can also go and watch her floss tube videos, The Southern Ladybug. And she shows a lot of her crochet projects. So she's incredible. And these are super sweet and super soft. So that's Rooster Cogburn. He's my, you know, buddy while I'm doing my videos. Okay. My shop update is on Friday, I received a huge shipment from Picture This Plus Fabrics. So if you're interested in Picture This Plus Fabrics, check out Jen's Stitching Niche. So I have a bunch of fabrics in, including 16 Count Ada, which is new to my shop. On Monday, I will be receiving a shipment of fabrics from Leslie at Under the Sea Fabrics. So check out my shop then, see if there's any of the fabrics that you're interested. I, I ordered a bunch of her kind of prim colors, plus her fabrics are great. And um, again, I'm going to start putting those project bags in my shop, so you'll have to just check back periodically to see if I've, I've added anything new with that. I received the newest hands-on design chock full harvest pattern yesterday and got that posted. And just lots of new things in the shop, so check that out. Um, one of the specials that I've been running all year is that if you order, uh, if your order is $25 or more, it's free shipping. And a lot of people take advantage of that. So free shipping, um, that's uh, first class shipping, U.S. residents. So, and um, starting July 1st, I have, when I was at market, I picked up a bunch of the um, Gentle Arts limited edition flosses that were just, you know, individual skeins. I think I have like 50 of those. And so starting July 1st, the first 50 people who place orders with me will get a skein of Gentle Arts um, limited edition floss, just random ones that I picked up at market. So that's a special kind of gift that I'll be doing during July. Each one of my orders receive some type of free chart, whether it's a free chart from the stock that I bought from Teresa a few years ago when she closed her shop, um, or it is a freebie from another designer. But you get at least a free chart, and usually I try to throw something in there, okay? Last thing is the giveaway. So when I ordered from one of my distributors one time, I received some Lizzie Kate charts that did not have the charms in them. And I don't know why I didn't contact them and get this fixed, but I didn't. And so I have three copies of Summer Alphabet from Lizzie Kate that's just the chart. The little charm that normally came with it was not in here. So these are my giveaway. I'm going to do a giveaway for these for three different people to receive this chart. To enter in the giveaway, I want you to tell me your favorite summer dessert. Leave that as a comment below. Do not say giveaway or I'll delete your comment. You have to be 18 years or older to enter. And I will ship internationally with the chart. So just leave the message, a comment below and I will do the drawing 
on July 5th. Okay? Thank you for listening. Thank you for those of you that come back each uh, each time I update a video because it's not, it's kind of sporadic. Thank you for any new people that are, are have listened to me this far, listen this long. Um, I really enjoy the comments. I do read all the comments, and like everybody says, I I do read them. I don't get a chance to respond to every one of them. I wish I could. But thank you so much for your attention, and if you have any questions, leave a comment below, and I will see you soon.